All right, I'm answering more of your questions coming right up. This video is brought to you by my book, 150 Self-Publishing Questions Answered. The book for writers wanting to know the A to Z of writing, publishing, and book marketing. It'll give you clarity, confidence, and teach you how to turn your imagination into income. Level up your author business today by visiting authorlevelup.com slash 150. The book is available in ebook, paperback, and audio narrated by me. That's authorlevelup.com slash 150. What's up, guys? Michael Aran here with Author Level Up, helping you master the craft of writing. In this video, I'm answering even more of your self-publishing questions. And I had to do a special video because there was one person, when I put this call to action out, they said, you know what? I'm going to ask Michael not one question, not two questions, not three questions, but 10 questions. <laughs> person asked me 10 questions and I said, you know what? I saw this. I said, challenge accepted. So we're going to do a dedicated video to answer questions. And that person is WMH98296. And the first question is, is Scrivener still your primary writing app? What other writing apps do you routinely use? Yes, Scrivener is still my primary writing app for fiction. I cannot think of another writing app that I would even think about writing fiction in at this point. There are a lot of good ones out there. I've reviewed them on the channel, but Scrivener is still my go-to for fiction. Now, for my writing books in nonfiction, I actually use Ulysses. Uh, Ulysses is a subscription-based writing app. I know some of you are going to throw tomatoes at the screen, but I happen to like it a lot better for nonfiction because it's got a universal library, and uh, there's just a lot of features that are better uh, better for nonfiction writing. So I use Scrivener for fiction and Ulysses for nonfiction, and it's been that way for me for about the last four years. Second question, do you think Dabble could replace Scrivener in your writing process? Why or why not? I think Dabble is a great app. I have no problems with it. You guys can see the, the video review that I gave. You know, there, there were some shortcomings with Dabble that I think hold it back, um, that, I, I, that, that they're working on, and I, I think in terms of long-term potential, I think you should definitely keep your eye on them. That said, it would take a hell of a lot to get me to stop using Scrivener and Ulysses at this point. Has nothing to do with Dabble though. Third question, are you still doing all of your writing on a MacBook or do you ever use other devices such as a Windows PC, FreeWrite, Alpha Smart Neo, or Apple iPad? Yeah, I do all of my writing primarily on my MacBook, but I also do it on my phone believe it or not. I actually write on my phone and I've talked about that a number of times. I use the Scrivener iOS app and the Ulysses iOS app so that uh, if I'm at the doctor's office or I'm in the backseat of a Uber car or uh, stand in line at the grocery store and the line is really long, then I can get a few sentences in. But yeah, I primarily use my Mac. That's where I get a lot of my words in since the pandemic. But pre-pandemic and probably after the pandemic when I have to go back to work, <laughs> a lot of my words come from my phone. Uh, about 40%. Question number four, do you use Vellum to format your eBooks? If not, what do you use? Yes, I do use Vellum to format my eBooks and my paperbacks. Vellum is the Cadillac of formatting software, but before I use Vellum, I use Scrivener's compile feature. So Scrivener has a pretty robust compile feature that allows you to format eBooks Paperbacks, uh, I, I don't know if I would do that. I would do Scrivener with that. I know some people do, but that's that just it seems like it's asking for a lot of trouble in my opinion. So I use Vellum for eBooks, um, and I use um, yeah, Vellum for paperbacks. But before that, I use Scrivener for eBooks, and then I just use Microsoft Word for paperbacks. It was a pain in the neck <laughs> to do Microsoft Word. Uh, formatting, and that's why I don't do it anymore. Um, if you're in a pinch and Vellum is really expensive, like I said, Scrivener does a really good job. If you're, if Scrivener is not your thing, I would highly recommend Caliber. Caliber is a free writing app. Uh, it's it's what I like to call one of the best. Uh, un, it's the most underrated tool on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> no, almost. I think a lot of people know about it, but I don't think people really realize how awesome Caliber is. Um, it's got a lot of really great features, and you can do just about everything you would want in a formatting app on Caliber. Um, if you're willing to spend a little bit of money and you're not willing to spend Vellum, you know, maybe it's too expensive for you, Judo is another really good formatting app that's available on both Windows and Mac. Question number five. 
How long does it typically take you to write the first draft of a novel? Second draft, final draft. Well, the answer to this one is it usually takes me about a month or two. Um, some, some novels take a little bit longer. Some novels take a lot longer, honestly. Um, you know, my first novel took me 18 months. Um, my, the novel I'm working on right now has taken me a really long time, like almost eight months, because I've been working on it off and on. <laughs> this is definitely, uh, I don't know what's, it's kind of a weird novel. Usually I'm a lot faster than that. Um, but anywhere from one, one, two, maybe three months, depending on, um, depending on the complexity of it. And uh, I write most of my novels these days in one draft. But I will go back through the novel and um, take a look at things and, and update and edit. And uh, I, I have been known to use beta readers from time to time. Question number six, do you let your drafts age as Stephen King suggests, or do they go straight to publication? Yeah, I, I, I send them straight to publication. You know, I rip the Band-Aid off. You know, Stephen King is, 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 is good people. Uh, he gives a lot of good writing advice. And, um, you know, certainly I, on writing was one of the first books I ever bought, uh, but I'm not really a subscriber to the let books age uh, function. I'm more of a Dean Wesley Smith subscriber that um, the book you write is an indicator of your talent at that point in time. Nothing more, nothing less. And yeah, you publish it. Sure, some people may not like it. Maybe maybe it's not your best work. Um, but I personally believe that the best way that you can improve is to continue writing more, not to, to, to go back over the same manuscript again and again in hopes of improving it. I think that the law of diminishing returns applies. Now, that's not to say that there's no value in revising or going, going multiple drafts. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I've just found that personally for me, getting, getting the book written, doing the very best I can, working with beta readers, working with editors, and then getting it out the door is uh, the best way for my emotional health as a writer. Question number seven, are you still dictating any of your work using Dragon or other speech to text application? Another great question. And the answer is that I'm not currently dictating any of my work. The main reason for this is because Dragon for Mac has been discontinued. It, it, it didn't work very well to begin with, but it, it was discontinued in 2018. Um, and so in order for me to use Dragon now, I need to purchase the, I think it's uh, individual professional bundle. And then I have to install that on my Windows machine. Um, I, I have Windows installed on my Mac, so I, I can just install the Dragon on my Windows machine and then use it that way. But I just haven't been willing to pony up the cash on that. And I get a lot more mileage from writing on my phone these days. Um, but I am thinking about a project in 2021 where I will be dictating again. Question number eight. Are you still a pantser rather than a plotter? I am a pantser through and through. Uh, I, the only time I plot, and, and when I say plot, I use it in quotes, um, it is when I'm writing nonfiction. Because I, I do believe that there's a benefit with nonfiction to knowing a logical order in which you're going to structure your book so that it makes sense to readers. So I do spend, you know, some time plotting or organizing my thoughts for what I'm going to write for my nonfiction. But for my fiction, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't outline anymore. And it's hard to conceive of when I might do that again. Um, the only time that for me, like uh, that I would ever outline fiction moving forward, just kind of knowing myself, know thyself is important, um, would be if I ever collaborated on a novel with someone. So if I was co-writing a novel, <laughs> it'd be awfully hard to write that, you know, by the seat of your pants. That would require some, some plotting, but uh, uh, right now I'm a pantser 100%. Question number nine, what is your next favorite creating outlet after writing? That is an interesting question. I don't know if I have one. <laughs> So funny story. When I first started writing, uh, I, I I used to be a musician and I used to cr I used to write music. In fact, I, I did a super old video on this channel. You can check it out if you're interested on songs that I that I wrote. I wrote over 100 songs, and I wanted to be a video game music composer. And so I loved um, I loved writing music that sounded like it could be in a video game. But when I became a writer, I I jumped all into this profession and I stopped doing all of that stuff. So I gave up video games. I gave up writing music and I sold all the instruments that I owned. And so this really is my biggest creative endeavor, but I do listen to a lot of jazz. I listen to a lot of jazz, a lot of video game music. And uh, if I'm not writing, I'm probably, um, you know, probably on YouTube or on Apple music or something, listening and, and discovering new artists. Cause that's uh, something I really enjoy. And question number 10, 
Do you use an agent or do you represent yourself? Well, I do not use an agent. Um, you know, some folks are gonna throw tomatoes at me for saying this, but you know, it's just, it just is what it is. Um, having been to law school and having a uh, better than average understanding of copyright and how it can be stolen from you, um, I just am not a fan of giving my intellectual property away to anybody um, other than someone who's going to use it. And I got nothing against traditional publishers or nothing against literary agents. There are good literary agents out there. This is not a, um, uh, I'm just not a fan of uh, traditional publishing contracts in any shape or form. I think they will ruin your career. I even think that they could destroy you in your career and everything you hold dear as a writer. And I, I, I don't use those terms lightly. But I'm not gonna end this video on a deep, dark note. Let's look at some pretty things. <laughs> Let's look at some puppies. Let's look at some kittens. You know, it's it's all fun and roses. There's, there's really nothing that can destroy you, but you know, just be careful with copyright, folks. I even did a video series on copyright. If you haven't seen it, get yourself uh, up to speed on that so you can protect yourself, because uh, there's a lot of scary stuff out there if you don't know what you're signing. So. WH, I hope that uh, this answered a lot of your questions, and I hope that uh, the questions or the answers to your questions uh, satisfied you. If not, feel free to reach out to me, and I'd be happy to clarify uh, anything that I answered in this video. So with that, don't forget, you can keep asking your questions, and I'll keep answering them. So, oh, and don't forget that I've got a book called 150 Self-Publishing Questions Answered that answers a lot of the most common self-publishing questions, and you can get that at authorlevelup.com slash 150. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.